today when we've been hit so hard by the flu. So Scott, come and you, uh, you just do whatever the Lord's laid on your heart. God bless you. Well, it is a pleasure to be here. Um, I, uh, I want to first introduce to you the Lord Martinez. I, I want to uh, thank you for taking the opportunity to hear about her ministry and about her work. Just briefly, um, thank you also because I have not been here since the summer trips that we went to Peru last June and also back to Honduras in August, September of last year. And in Peru, we treated like a thousand people at our clinics that we set up and, and gave away thousands of dollars worth of medicines thanks to, to your help. We've seen hundreds saved in those efforts we had. We worked with Brother Matt Harrell. Brother Mike Kennedy in Peru, and we were working through and by the churches that they were planting in Peru, and we would see a decision made for Christ and immediately usher those folks onto the local pastors for follow-up care and that spiritual help. And, and again, we've done the, the, uh, the trips that you're familiar with if you've been here, back to Honduras. And again, I think we treated 1,800 in Honduras this year. And, and seen again over a hundred decisions for Christ. And I praise his name for that. And that's that's all, I think, uh, rewards that you will see one day in heaven when you, yeah. when you see what uh, is being accomplished through and by your missionary efforts. And while we were in Peru this year, uh, uh, Brother Judge Capper and I, we were in, in, the, uh, in the pharmacy. And Laura worked with this in the translation of the instructions of all the medicines that we gave out. And, and she sat right there. So one of the things that is, is very important when you see an effort being made, like the short-term mission trips that we take, is we can do nothing without people like Laura being able and in a position to translate for us and to help us and to work alongside us. And she's going to tell you about the calling in her life, about how she wants to go and live in Peru as a 20-year-old young lady called to the mission field, called to help Brother Matt, called to help Brother Mike Kennedy, called to, for a full-time service. You know, the kind words that my brother-in-law, your pastor, shared about me, well, I was thinking, they fell in comparison. Because if I was anywhere where Laura was when I was 20, you know, one thing I know, I will stand in judgment someday and I will weep tears of sorrow when God shows me the ministry that could have been. Mm, folks, the ministry that could have been if I, when I was 20, was where she is today. You know, God finally woke me up and, and it was just been a few years ago and He said, you know, I've got to work for you. And I don't care where we are in life. God has a work for you. Amen. So when you listen to Sister Laura tell you about her burdens, I mean, you know, I'm looking for some young folks, and I know the junior church was just dismissed, but, but folks, we need to shepherd our kids and our grandkids into service, into the Lord, so they don't stand up here with scars from the world, pulling us down, holding us back. Let's get these kids on track early. Let's get these kids in a place where they can serve God early. Sister Laura, if you would. She may sing for you too. I'll leave that up to her. <laughs> Thank you so much for um, allowing me to come here, um, Pastor Bluefield and church, uh, you know, I, just listening to the to the prayer request this morning really burned my heart for you all, because it seems like everyone here is either going through a hard time or knows someone who is going through a hard time, and I'm going to pray for you all, because, you know, one thing I've learned is you never know what someone else is going through, and your trials are not really as bad as you think you are, as, as you think they are, when, compared to someone else. So uh, I just wanted to say that I'm going to pray for you all, and I, and I hope that sickness will eventually pass. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit about me. My name is Laura Martinez, and I'm 20 years old. My parents are also missionaries. They're missionaries to the Hispanics in the USA. That's why I'm able to speak Spanish. I grew up with it. 
and uh, been in the ministry almost almost all my life, and just have always been involved in Sunday school. My parents have always made us uh, get involved with the church and get to know the people. And so I grew up around uh, Hispanics, and I and I love them. I I'm more comfortable around them than than anyone than anyone else. And I found out that now where I'm at now, God had been preparing me that whole time for what I'm going to do right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful that I, I did listen to his calling, even though it wasn't as, as quick response as I wish it would have been. Um, God had, I think God had called me uh, earlier when I responded later, but that's another story. Um, I got saved when I was seven years old at a VBS, um, actually listening to a missionary story. Someone was telling a story about a, a little boy who got saved in an African country uh, who had been told about the gospel through a missionary. And so even from the time of my salvation, I had missions on my heart. And when I graduated high school, I had told the Lord, Lord, I mean, I've been involved in missions with my parents, but Lord, I want you to give me a mission field. I want my own ministry. I want, you, I want to do something for you and not just, you know, be, be involved with my parents. If that's what you want me to do, that's fine. But then I got Isaiah 6, 8. I read Isaiah 6, 8 where uh, Isaiah responded to God's calling and said, Here am I, Lord, send me. And I just took that um, verse as my own. I said, Lord, send me wherever you want me to go. And not even a week later, um, Matt Harrell, who, is, who used to be my youth pastor, he had surrendered to go to Peru as a missionary, him and his family. And uh, he, he approached me and actually asked, told me, God laid it on his heart mm. that um, he, wants, he wanted to know if I would like to intern with them for the first six months there in Peru to help them settle in and translate for them and get them settled in the country. And I said, sure, you know, this would this be a good opportunity to see a mission field. And then maybe once I get back to the States and graduate college and get married, God will show me where the mission field he wants me to go is. Uh, so I go to Peru and I'm just expecting, you know, See how ministry is and how foreign third world countries are and I'm going to come back and finish my education degree but God completely changed my thinking because my ways are not his ways and my thoughts are not his thoughts. So I go over to Peru and just to tell you a little bit about it, I'm sure you know some from all the trips, is uh, it's a third world country, it's very poor. Um, the poverty rate, I think, uh, I can't remember exactly what, I think it's 35% of the population are live in extreme poverty. Now, emphasis on the extreme, because in, you go, you're in the children's home that, that's a part of the ministry over there. When you walk out the doors, it's dirt roads, it's uh, mud walls, it's uh, shanty homes up on the mountain. It's so poor, the, no electricity, no running water, no sewer, nothing. And it's so poor, and the people there seem to have nothing. And you would think, uh, man, those people must be grumpy and, and dissatisfied and and just not very nice to be around, but they are so open and honest, and they could they would give you the shirt off their back if you needed it. And they're and they're hungry. That's the thing. Their religion doesn't offer them any hope. The the religion tells them that they have to be good enough in order to get to salvation, in order to get to heaven, or you have to have such amount of money, or you have to do such amount of good deeds. And they don't have any hope in that because they're poor and they don't have things. So they're, they're hopeless. And then when you show, tell them that Jesus Christ died to save them, and all they have to do is trust Him, and they can go to heaven forever and live in a palace full of gold, you know, it's just mind-boggling to them, and, they, and they're and they hungry for it, and they're open for it, and they want to know more about it. You pass out tracts on the street, and people beg you for five or six more. Can I send, give some to, to my cousin, to my sister, to my aunt? And we pass out tracts when, uh, when, that, when their group came, and just the hunger for it. And the pastors of the churches there, they're, they're recognizing that, and they're wanting to get the gospel out. When we, when we had uh, one of the clinics over at one of the churches in Waikon, which is a little village in Peru, um, during the medical mission strip, we, we get a name and an address of every person who comes in there to get medicine. And they, of course, they get counseled, but not only do they get counseled, but if we get their name and their address, that way they, the pastor can go back uh, out during the week and keep following up visiting them. And I remember after that one, that one medical mission, that one clinic, the pastor came up to us running at the end of it, and he's running and said, look at all these pages. I have pages full of people who I can go witness to during the week. And they're just on fire for the Lord, and they're hungry for it, and they want to know more about it. So Peru is, is open to the gospel right now. This is a perfect time. You know, the harvest is white. It's ready, it's ready to be picked. And I'm excited about being able, God calling me, and going 
uh, to go help the, help the missionaries over there. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be planting churches because I can't do that, but I will be helping them in a lot of things. Um, there's a children's home there where the kids who are abandoned by their own parents because of poverty or because of just not wanting them, they're abandoned by the, on the streets. We There's a children's home there operated by these two missionaries where they take those kids in, they give them a warm place to stay, they give them food to eat, they give them love and attention, but they also give them the chance to know that Jesus Christ died to save them. And that's the most important thing. And these kids have been through so much. And that's one thing I noticed last summer, is that um, they've been through so much. I mean, we have problems here in America, but we're still so blessed. Uh, you know, I don't know of many people here in America that have ever been... Uh, abandoned out on the street or thrown away in the trash can as a newborn like in, in these third world countries and they've just been neglected by their own family, by their own mothers and still they have this yearning to know more about God and they want to, they love you with all their hearts and they're so sweet and this, this ministry of this children's home is really raising up its own missionaries because these kids come to know Christ and when they get adopted into new homes, they tell their families about Christ, and those families can tell other fam their neighbors and friends about Christ. So it's just the most amazing ministry I've ever been a part of, to see these kids uh, come to know Christ and just love Him with all their hearts. It's so sweet. And uh, I do a lot of things over there. I work at the children's home. I work in the churches and during kids' clubs and uh, all kinds of outreaches and anything to do with kids' ministries. And I'm going to start up a women's group over there. <coughs> Brother Mike Kennedy has a huge vision of, of all these other outreaches we can be a part of and I can help out with. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm excited to get back. I've been on deputation since September and I'm at 65% in my support. I just calculated it up last week. And uh, so it's we're almost there. I'm hoping to leave by next the end of next February of this coming February of next month. So uh, I hope that you pray for me and pray for the, the ministries in Peru. Uh, they desperately need it right now. We're expanding. We're hoping to get 60 more kids in. Um, with it, you know, it depends on the support. Um, I have prayer cards up here at the front with my display board. Take one, please, and pray for me and put it somewhere where you'll remember. Or pray for remember to pray for the ministries in Peru. Uh, you know, people will talk about me being young, going over to Peru full time. And um, I was just reading this morning, I got here early because I thought this, this church was in Portsmouth. Because I think there's another view look in Portsmouth. So I left Charleston at uh, 7.30 this morning. And I find, I, I'm glad I, got, I caught it before I got here, but I, I found my GPS was wrong. So I redirected it and it said, 45 minutes away. I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> so I was in the parking lot at, I think it was 8.45 this morning. So, but it was fine, I had time to think, and I was reading, actually, in Genesis 15, and the very first verse says, After these things, the word of the Lord, word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. The previous chapter was talking about how Abram had obeyed God and letting Lot choose first, and Lot, of course, chose the good, the good, the, um, the good land, but that was near Sodom and Gomorrah, which is the world in, in the Bible's picture. And Abram got the more the wilderness. And God said, don't worry, Abram. Don't worry. I, I am my shield and that exceeding great reward. You know, people tell me, why don't you choose? Why aren't you going to school first? Why aren't you going to wait and get married first and have kids and then go? And, uh, you know, I don't know God's plan, but I do know that God, that Jesus is my exceeding great reward. And if I get Amen. nothing else in this life than that, Amen. then... I'm, I'm, I'm completely satisfied. So I just hope that you pray for me and, um, and the rest of this deputation that I can get enough support to go in February. If not, I'm going to step out on faith and do it anyway. Because I think that that's what God wants me to do. So please pray for me. And uh, I can sing. If you would like to. <laughs> please sing.
about six minutes long. It's just got some pictures of me in Peru, of the ministries in Peru, and just something you can visualize when you pray for us. Thank you. 